let's put that there. We need kitchen roll. Oops, that's too many. Never mind. Uh, right, I need some paint to paint jars. That's one. Let's try and move that a bit more central. Right, paint jars. Um, Oh, they smell. Um, right, paint brushes. Oh. All right. Let's get comfy. I think we're pretty much ready to start streaming. Oh, I've got... Um, is there more? Let's go ahead. What is that cat doing? I think I'm not near enough ready. There's, there's a stain on my painting. I want to say it might be pigment. Try and lift that up a bit. Uh, uh, yeah. That's fine, we can hide it. <laughs> oh, high box paint, how are things going? Let's take that thing off the screen. How is the stream looking? Is it sounding okay? Does it look okay? Right. Do I have my little oh, test? Oh, I did have my little tray of colours. It's quite handy. That'll do. Whoops. Right, where are we? There we go. Oh, hello. What are you doing? No, I didn't recap that. 
Sarah, what are you doing? <laughs> she just wants her to sit down. I can move something if you're... Okay. So you're gonna just climb onto the window. Okay. Right, let's continue on with the butterfly painting. Goodness, from last week. Oh, that's great, thanks for letting me know. Oh, I don't know why the way I look on camera. <laughs> Got me size four, what else do I want? I want a size two. Oh, that's size two, that'll do. Let's get some paint on the go. Try and do a few more bits. Yeah, do some more layers of blue. I'm gonna try and finish this today if I can. Oh, I just need to remember I need to try and find out my Schmincke black that I like. doing Lyra? You've been naughty. See it's the same colour, this is PB16. And this is my handmade one and I'm using today a different paintbrush. I'm using a Billy Shaw one, well Raphael paintbrush. I have a really weird relationship with paintbrushes, which I know we talked about last week. <laughs> so I thought I'd try it and see if I still felt the same. <laughs> Few more layers on, make this a bit more, make it look a bit better. Try and smooth out some of these lines. How has everyone's week been? Try and smooth that. I'm looking forward, I think, to doing, using the black paint. I don't often use black paint or very dark paint like that. So it's going to be fun to, I think it's going to be fun to paint. Going in with such a strong colour. Oh, I'm just going to fly in on that one. Whoops. Um, right, where else are we going to look? Put some colour in. I think other brands make this colour too. I think I've seen it in Roman Schmalls, Old Holland make it. I think Windsor and Newton might make it too. Not seen anybody else that quite makes this colour. I don't think Snellier make it. 
Schmincke might do it. I know they do some good paints. I don't think M. Graham make it. If this is the one the colours they don't make. So I need to be more careful. Going outside the lines too much. Oh, hello. Oh, I took a week off to set up my art space and I should achieve it. And also, we have three other rooms in the house. Oh, no. Oh, that's good to see you've done your art studio. Oh, you can see the dust off my head. <laughs> oh, hi, Cyan. How are things going? It's funny you mentioned about cleaning. I did mine last week. Like I tidied up my, all my pigment drawers, so they're all tidy now. I've even bought a label maker to label some of the tops of the jars. I've tidied it around a little bit. And then neaten things up. So yeah, I guess I, I guess that kind of year isn't it? everybody fancies like um, a bit of a tidy up. It's that sort of changing of the season that kind of makes you feel a bit refreshed. I think for a lot of us, we're quite relieved to get that kind of refresh. Everything that's been happening in the last year, I think it's feeling more refreshing and sort of nice this time around. Uh, you haven't fallen into the temptation of labor because just yet, but I did the whole catalog of what pigments that you have. Yeah, the weather was really strange this week too. We've had a lot of rain, a lot of cold. We've also had quite quite warm and sunny spells as well, so it's a bit odd. I guess we are similar. I have similar weather too because we're not a million miles apart, are we? I think we're like within fifty miles of each other, so. Our weather system is a bit sim is well more similar than what it would be like say to some parts of the UK. Oh, I did a really rough job of this one. <laughs> right, in terms of label makers, I didn't get an expensive one. Part of me wished I did because all I got was this one, so it's quite a cheap one. I think it costs about £7 from eBay. But it seems to be doing the job okay at the minute. I don't know how long it's going to last, because it's not obviously that great, greatly made. It's quite a cheap one. We'll see. I mean, I only want to make a two label my pigment jars because where I put them in the drawers is you can't see what they are from the top when you open the drawer. So I wanted something to just kind of label it so I knew which pigment was what when looking at it. Like when I open the drawer. Uh, so your garden furniture, I right? started building it in a t shirt. My husband came down with a hoodie and then it hailed. Oh no. I don't think we've quite had hail. We have had quite a lot of rain. Kind of based in a bit of a weird area of the country when it comes to weather. Like when it snowed not too long ago, we didn't get any snow. I mean, it snowed here, but it didn't really settle. So there wasn't a lot of snow. Not 
there wasn't enough snow to affect anybody. So it's kind of weird. We're like one of the few places in the UK that kind of skipped out on the snow. Which in a way is a good thing, but it would have been nice to have some snow. I think we're set for more wet weather this week, which is irritating because I'm off at the end of the week. So I'm hoping it starts to brighten up for the week after. So you get um, similar weather in Finland. <laughs> Yes, yeah, weird. I often hear people compare Finland to the UK in a lot of different ways. I don't know whether they are actually like, as I've never been to Finland. Obviously it's a bit colder in Finland and you get more snow, much more snow than we do, but... I've heard you have the whole four seasons in a day kind of weather. And your government sounds like it kind of runs similarly to the way the, I want to say, UK one does, even though there's not much of a UK going on here anymore. Getting this slowly. Not quick enough at all. <laughs> I really would like to get this finished. Because it's not a super detailed piece. It's more of a fun piece. It's kind of working on colour and pattern rather than intricate details. Uh, your Porsche, this should be something to fire. Ooh, that'd be exciting. Oh, they've not started to root yet. Oh. I know, I, I feel the same with my house plants. Like I sometimes it's hit and miss with house plants. Some of them are dying off, some of them are thriving. Uh, back in normal times, Texas, spring and fall, you'd have a couple of weeks where you'd wake up and it's freezing. Lunchtime is boiling and the evening is cool. Uh, yeah, we, we do get some days like that in the UK. Maybe not quite those extremes, but you can wake up and it'd be quite cold and chilly in the morning. Like it's, it's the wet weather and then you get to lunchtime and you need to strip off because it's warm. And then in the evening again, you'll get that cold weather. I do like days like that. I definitely like a cool, cold evening. Mm. 
cold morning, not so much. <laughs> it's horrible stepping out of the shower and it being cold. Because then you just want to stay in the shower for longer, which only really makes things worse. And more difficult to adjust to. I think I could go over some of these shapes again in a wash just to try and tidy them up because some of them, even the lightest like blue is still pretty um, pretty rough in some places. But I have to be careful this paint will lift quite easily. It stains but it lifts quite easily, like it's quite easy to reactivate it and get it going. Yeah, my aloe vera is doing really well. It's really, it's a really good plant to have aloe vera. It's super hard to kill. And does really well in most places. And it survived our cold winter. Especially in my place, because I don't, it's not, it doesn't live in a heated room. The kitchen doesn't have any heat in it, so. I mean, it survived that, so. It's going to be a strong plant. Oh, hi Danny, how are, how are things? Uh, your terrarium needs to trim back. Oh no. Yeah, it's that weird time of year, isn't it, where I always find, like, spring and autumn, how, like, my aloe vera at least goes wild. Like, it has, like, a growth spurt around that time. It's, like, it's the perfect weather for it. It's not too hot. So it's not going to burn, like, in the sunlight. And it's not too cold, so it 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 froze quite well. Tidy that up. I think I'm kind of happy with some of these. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna leave the shapes now. I'm gonna go over them again in a pale wash. I think once it's dried properly. And then I might darken a few more. I might do a tiny bit of dry brushing with some of them. But for the meantime, I want to have a little focus on this flower at the bottom. I think I'm going to do it in orange, I want to say. Use some complementary colours and do orange and blue. And there's kind of an awkward conversation going on on my WhatsApp between the group I've got with my mum and dad. <laughs> They're having a conversation on the group WhatsApp group. It's just me, those two, and me in it. But they live together and will be in the same room and they're having a conversation. I'm guessing they're hoping I join in, but it's not really a conversation with me they're having. <laughs> Yeah, I think I just killed a, um, what plant is it? A lychee plant that I grew a couple of years ago from the seed. I think that's just died on me this week. And I think my, well, my last cacti are dying as well. I had six cacti the other, a couple of years ago. I've now got two. One of them looks like it might be dropped, dying off. That means I can get some new plants, right? If some of the old ones die. I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, but I repotted my aloe vera into a larger plant, into a larger plant pot because it was doing so well. Which is good. So I'm going to use some of this transparent orange from Windsor & Newton. I really love this colour. And I'm going to mix it with some of this yellow that's on the palette. I don't know what this yellow is. It's just a yellow. I'm going to use. I'm going to use that for the for the um, plant down the bottom, which you can't really see because of um. Obviously, I've done it in light pencil, so you guys can't really see it very well. 
Is this three more healthy and good? We're not skipping too much, are we? Hopefully it's nice and smooth. Right, so, oh, we've got hair. Whoops. So I'm going to go in quite lightly with the orange because I don't know what it's going to look like. That paintbrush is nowhere near big enough. It's just not giving enough enough water. Hold on. Use a bigger brush. Use my rosemary brush. Get this one going. That's much better. Oops. Just think get a nice clean edge. It's more difficult to do than what you think. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Um, let's try and take off some colour, just so it's not completely all. Go for some different tone in there. I don't know if that's showing up on camera or not. Uh, I didn't expect it to be so good. Oh, with the, you thought you just have to leave it to water. Leave it and water it. I know sometimes can, sometimes plants just can do really weird things. Um, where are we going to start? I don't even know where to. There's a. Trying to be careful because I don't want to paint them too close together. from it and I will pick some light out of it. Oh well of course you did with like a steel um, terrarium, terrarium at some point. I've seen quite a lot of those done. I'd be, be really worried about them like if they started biting. Like I've seen that video of that one guy that's got one. These has been like, it's been going for like over 20 years, I think it is. That looks really good. Okay, this looks amazing, like that. it's huge. No, my luck, I'd have one and it would die. That's just the kind of luck that I have. <laughs> I, yeah, I tend to be like evil or all with houseplants. I have really good luck with them and they thrive. Oh, they just die on me. There isn't really an in-between, I find. But no, next on my list is a bonsai tree. I've decided that one. A nice bonsai tree. I 
that I hopefully won't kill. Obviously nobody wants to kill their house plants, but <laughs> sometimes it's quite easy to do. Hang on, where's the cat doing? They were being naughty, so... Uh... Let's just shut them in the front room. Um, that's really strange that you've got one, two aloe vera, one in one window and one in another one, one's living and one's not doing so well. So I know they're very hardy plants, like it survives the cold in my, in my flat in the winter. And it does really well in the uh, summer. It does go a little bit brown in the summer though, I have to watch it with the window. Because I killed a orchid once by doing that, I put it on my window, went on holiday for a couple of weeks came back and found that my parents hadn't moved it and it died. Um, mine's a bit fussy, like it generally likes sun. If I put if I have it in the sun for too long, okay, so it gets really sunny. Like we had some really sunny weather the other week. And if I have it in the window all day, it it will um, it can go a bit brown on some of the leaves. So I have to be careful, not overdo it in the sun. So we'll just um. It will just not like it. In general, it likes it. it's pretty good, but it just tends to be on those really hot, sunny days we get, where it's like really sunny, like from like seven o'clock in the morning to like eight o'clock at night, we get really bright sun.
I like orchids. They're really nice flowers. I, I, I am tempted to get another one because my current one's not flowering at all. It's very weird. It's just all leaves. It's a shame that my mum has killed all of her orchid, orchids because I would have taken one off of her. If I had known that she didn't really want them. I also want to try growing um, parrot tulips indoors as well, see if that would work. I did also mean to contact my local council for a allotment. There are some allotments near me and I don't think they were supposed to be like too expensive. I think you're talking sort of like like a hundred pounds a year, for like a good size plot, which is not too expensive. But I never got around to it and I feel like it might be too late to do it now. <laughs> and I don't really um, have the funds at the minute to do something like that. All the time really to have an allotment. Because I wanted you to join the gym as well. But um, again, but again, I don't think I've got time to go to the gym. So it'd be a bit pointless. Um, whoa. Uh, recently I read that the more times the brush goes over the paper, the more damaged the surface fibers become, the, become some pigment particles set up between the stirred up fibers. Um, it depends what you're doing and what the paper is. It varies on the paper and the brush and the technique that you use, but I'm using really good strong paper here. It's a cold pressed paper and I'm using a really soft stable brush. So there shouldn't be much irritation going on with the paper, because I'm not soaking it. But yeah, it does, it, it, it's hard to do, because you, it's something that beginners would tend to do quite a lot. You really have to go over the paper lots and lots of times for it to um, be affected. And it would have to be on a really poorly sized paper that um, would, like, that would have to happen to. I generally use pretty good sized papers, like I use a Saunders paper normally, which has got sizing in the paper mix before it's dried, so sizing all the way through the paper. So that wouldn't, that wouldn't be a thing that would happen on Saunders paper because it's sized all the way through. And it's very good paper, so you're not going to have that issue. Some papers that aren't sized all the way through or have really weak sizing, that might happen too. So you have one a orchid from Sainsbury that was stopped for about a month and then so many blooms. Wow. Yeah, I think I've only seen mine bloom once, and that was when I got it. It was a old display orchid. It had um is it bacteria growing on it? Or it had that problem growing on it where it got too moist and it couldn't dry properly because obviously in garden centers when they water their orchids they just spray them over the top and they all have those cellophane cones over them don't they so it kept the humidity in and it was done i would imagine it was watered over their really humid week so it didn't dry properly and it got those black spots on the flowers they all the flowers of course dropped off which is fine um but it's still the flowers not the plant's not dead just have to cut all the flowers off or wait for them all to die off and then they should regrow back without the bacteria problem but so far i've not had anything grow back yet i trimmed the stalks down and everything but i've had a leaves growing
Yeah, I think I agree with what Box of Paint is saying. Bad paper will disintegrate and will have issues, like you're saying, like where the paper, like where the colour gets into the fibres and doesn't dry properly and gives off some duller colours, some dull colours, but good papers shouldn't do that. I mostly use good papers now. The only cellulose paper I use is Bockingford paper. That's because it's not bad paper. I don't tend to paint like finished pieces on it. I tend to do it like colour mixing on it or I do my demo videos like the colour mixing and the paint swatching on Bockingford paper. I won't do anything like finished on blocking for paper usually. Sometimes I do gouache on it. But like something like this I wouldn't do on blocking for paper, I would do on cotton paper, which is what I'm doing now. But this is cotton paper. And also the same can be true for the opposite, like some papers are really hardly sized, like the um, Moulin de Bois paper from Canson. That's really hardly sized, and so is the Arche watercolour paper. I would probably say you'd have to go over that a couple of layers of paint just to get the paint to sit nicely on it. Yeah, I agree. I think the quality of watercolour paper is really important, more important than I think than using student grade, like than using artist grade paint. Um, I think if you're starting out on watercolour paint pa painting and you're using student grade items, so student grade paint, student grade brushes, student grade paper, I think the first thing you should upgrade is your paper before your paints. Why did that hide your comment? That's very strange, it held that comment for review. But there's nothing bad about that comment. <laughs> YouTube does some weird things sometimes. Um, so I think there's a blade here. If there's not a blade there, there's about to be a blade there. <laughs> I think you can get away with using some really good student grade paints and never really needing to upgrade to artist grade paints unless you were looking for certain pigments. But I think with paper you really do have to upgrade. Like I don't really know what to see why in a way they call Sadeo's paper student grade paper because if you're learning watercolour you're likely to do many layers you might like to make some mistakes. You can be doing some scrubbing and some bits. Like, like I think artist grade, like cotton paper, would suit you a lot better to a student, who which can take a bit more punishment than like a much cheaper cellulose paper. That's just my two cents on it. Yeah, exactly. You can use some really good student grade paints on good paper and get good results. It's easier to use cheaper paints on good paper than good paints on bad paper. Oh, hi Nazareth. Nazareth. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce Nazareth. <laughs> uh, best tip, don't use regular hot rubber. Um, I do occasionally use that, but I use a good rubber. Um, eraser for those in the US. Don't use your contraceptives on um, watercolour paper. <laughs> um, but yeah, if I wasn't into doing YouTube stuff and wanting to experiment with artist grade paint, I probably would pick a good student grade paint and just go with them, like Van Gogh or the 
Should we get Academy Paints? Because you can get some really good student grade paints from good brands. I'm currently actually doing video, a video series on my channel at the moment, exploring student grade paints. So that's something that's been taking up some time and it's been, yeah, I'm interested to see what the results are. I've done all the swatching videos for them. I'm at the point where I'm doing um, doing the paint comparison, so I'm painting out four different paintings using the different brands. And seeing which one's the best one, based on how they paint and the colour selection. So I think that's a problem. It's a problem with not just um, student grade paint, but also artist grade paint. There's lots of videos on YouTube, mine included, that just do swatching. So you'll see the paints all swatched out, like on a colour chart, and people will base their impression or their review of the swatching. Um, it's one thing to see lots of pretty colours on a piece of paper. That doesn't give any indication on how they behave or how they perform or what it's like to paint with them. Um, I definitely found that with Holbein paints. They looked really good when I swatched them all out, but I really struggled with them when painting with them. And there are a couple of other brands, not just Sennelier, that I like that as well. Uh, so blocking for paper, you get about um, ATA5 for, or about £50, pounds. that's really good. I get a big block of A4 um, from Curtis Ward. Big block of A4, um, it's about 50 pages in there, that's about £20. Pounds. Um, I get that because I use those for my swatch cards for my handmade paints. So I go for quite a lot, and I also do them for all of my demo sheets, like my colour mixing and swatching. So I do if we go for quite a lot, I probably go through about 100 pages or so of blocking for paper a year. And that's A4, because I tend to get them every six months or so a pack. Oh yeah, so I just did a swatching of Van Gogh. I think the video came out last week. Um, I didn't find any streaky washes or any backgrounds. I've not done a demo painting with them just yet. I'm working my way through the brands doing the demo painting, but I've started doing the demo paintings. Um, but I think the demo painting will be quite telling on how they behave. But so far, the, on the just swatching, I'm, I like them. <laughs> They're doing good. They're in the running for number one. <laughs> but no, the four brands that I'm looking at are going to be Schmincke, Van Gogh, Windsor and Newton, and St. Elie for the student brand paints. It's really difficult because I'm trying to always keep the painting up right and I'm trying not to smudge anything I've already painted. So you didn't like the Sonnelli La Petit? You found them too chalky? I've not found them chalky yet. I've not painted with them yet though. Like I've not done a painting with them, I've just done the swatching. 
so far they're okay. They're kind of at the minute in last place, going off just a swatching alone. I haven't got any painting there in the bottom place at the moment for me personally because they don't have a lot of colour selection. You can get them open stock and they're not um and there's no pigment information. So if you want to trans like move to artist grade paint, after a while you're gonna struggle finding the right colour names and correct colour matches for the paints you've been using. And as well, you don't know if the pigments in the paints are light fast, so you don't know how long your painting is going to last after you painted it. So you like Van Gogh, but you didn't find them too transparent. It depends what colour selection you go for. They have got some opaque paints and some transparent ones. I think it will be really interesting who, which paint brand I like the most out of all four. I mean, I say that Sennelli at the moment is in the bottom. That's just going off the swatching. They might do really well when they when I paint with them. But I think I don't think they're going to do any better than the other brands, though. I think it, the top spot is going to be a fight out between Schmincker, Fangio, and the Cotman. I don't think there are going to be any surprises in it either. I think they're all going to behave pretty similarly, which will make my job very difficult. And I think I'll be I think I'll be deciding on the top spot based off a lot of different factors, not just how they handle, I think. Oh, I like this orange paint so much. It's such a beautiful colour. If nobody has this colour yet, you really need to get it. I don't paint a lot of oranges and I'm not a huge orange lover, but this colour is amazing. I love it so much. 10 out of 10 recommend. <laughs> uh, you really enjoyed your Sunil 18 set, 12 set. Trial set of paint. Yeah, that's the one I've got. I've got a trial set, the half pan set. I'm liking the look of the colours. Um, I would question whether they've got any brighteners in them because some of them look a little bit neon. Or if they've not got brighteners in, they're using maybe some not very light fast colours, is what my suggestion might be. Is that a question for is that a question for me or is that for box of paint? If it is for me, when we're talking favourite colours, are we talking just from like a particular range or just favourite colours in general? Let's do a white, let's do a really watery blue wash on, whoops. Thankfully that went on the paper and not my watercolour paper. <laughs> let's do a wash on some of the blue parts while I'm waiting for some of the orange to dry. because I want to smooth out some bits of the paint. They're a bit rough in places. Oh no, that's lifted. Perhaps I won't be doing that. <laughs> Scratch what I just said. <laughs> Let's just go over some bits again, make them stronger. Oh, for me, oh, just in general. Um, I have quite a lot of blues on my palette. Like on my palette, I've got a cerulean blue, this blue, PB16, in damp frame blue, and ultramarine blue. I'm not a huge fan of ultramarine though. I've, ten I've actually got it mostly for mixing. Um, so yeah, I like blues a lot. That's because I think you can get a lot of different blues though in terms of paint. I also really like violets. I like like dioxine violets quite a nice one. I like that colour. And I also like um PY3 lemon yellow. That's a really nice colour too. Oh thanks for stopping by Sarah. 
enjoy your dinner and say hi to Rooker for me. <laughs> But yeah, it's difficult to pinpoint one favourite colour because I like d different colours for different reasons, I think. That's why it's difficult. That's done really bad with lifting. Whoops. It's fine, we can fix it. It's an easy fix. Just have to wait for it to dry and we can go back over it. There are definitely as well colours I really hate <laughs> and will never use because I hate them so much. <laughs> what about chat? Does anybody in chat have any particular favourite colours and if so, why? see like blue and green colors so you've got a lot of boost too but in reality in the real world you prefer neutrals and you really like orange yeah no I agree with you orange is a really difficult color to get like a good color I really like this orange color from Winsor & Newton it's transparent orange and that is a really nice orange but yeah I've got a couple of oranges in my collection not just the earthy ones like PO48 or PO49, but like cadmium orange, I've got I've got some other oranges. And it's difficult to get a good um, orange because you can mix an orange so well. So to buy orange paint is kind of, it's, you don't really need to buy orange paint, really. Unless there's a specific color that's really good orange, like the transparent orange from Winter and Newton or the P-roll oranges that you can get. They're, they're really nice too, like the Pirot Orange from, again, like Schmincke or, or Winter & Newton or Core that are, is it PO71? Like Pirot Orange is a pretty good. But yeah, because you can mix them so easily it's difficult to get a good one. Yeah, I, I have quite a a difficult relationship with granulating paints. I like granulating paints in general, but I don't really like to use them in my work because they don't really fit in with botanical illustration. And if I'm painting portraits, I don't like granulation either because it's not really what I want. Like if someone's face with granulation, it wouldn't be particularly nice to look at. So it's really difficult. I like using granulation in my illustrative work, so anything that's more illustrated, I really like granulation in. So let's go back to some oranges, and then I might crack out a black paint we can paint some black. One of the very few colours that I hardly ever use in watercolour paint, but I feel like there has to be black on this. It's a butterfly. <laughs> uh, so you bought a couple of orange pigments from Jackson's and wanted to make them, but they aren't high on your list. Oh, what um, pigments did you get that were orange? Uh, the Windsor and or Newton Orange. Um, it looks a bit muted. There was a yellow mixed in with this orange. It's not pure orange. Um, I'll try and do a swatch of pure orange in a minute. 
Um, and I've also added a lot, of, a lot of water to it to make it not so bright because I obviously want to control the brightness of it, but I'll try and do a swatch in a minute of pure orange. And you guys can see just how bright it is. It's not, it's not a super bright orange. It's not super overpowering. It's not quite as strong as pure orange, but that's what's kind of nice about it. You get this nice bright orange, but it's not too bright or powerful. So you can kind of control it and use it a bit better. I don't think I've got pure orange actually in my collection. I don't think I've got pure 71 in any of my paints actually. I'm not sure it's a colour that I'm desperate to go and get. Especially now I've got this colour, which tends to be doing really well for it. I'm also sweeping off some colour as well, so it's not super strong on these. And yeah, it's a very transparent orange. It's not opaque. Um, let's see if I can find a bit of paper. Do I have some on my windowsill? Mm. That might be. Let's use it. So I'm going to just let's put this one aside. See if I can get a bit of a larger dot. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, Um, it's worth noting I don't actually have any fixed orange on my palette. Um, so I do use this colour and it's um, technically on my palette, but there's only 12. So I bring my palette, there's only 12 rolls on my palette. So I prioritised the 12 colours I would use the most. Where I don't really use orange unless I'm painting something orange. I don't have it on there as a permanent spot because it's a bit of a waste of um, a space. So let's see if I can find. Is this in camera? I don't want to do this if it's not in camera. <laughs> so, do you make it nice and strong. That's it in a bit more full strength and more concentrated. So let's just pop a bit of water on the bottom and we'll blend it out. And you can see what it looks like in a wash. So that's what it will look like. It's a bit stronger than what it looks on my painting because I've mixed the yellow with it and I'm using it really thin down, really um, watered down. I mean, this will still dry a bit more muted than a really bright orange, but it's still a really nice substitute for Pure 71. Uh, so you've got PO62 Perma Orange and PO36. I think I've got both those oranges from Crema, I think. I can't remember which is which. I call one of them Transparent Orange and one of them Pirate Orange. I can't remember which is which. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite a dark, it's quite a red orange. It is looking a little bit more red on camera than what it does in reality, but it's really difficult to match colour to the camera because my camera is only a webcam that I'm using for my live stream. It would look better in my normal camera. So if you look at my video for the Winter Newton review that I did, that was done with a much better camera and it does look a bit more orange on that one. That's why it's also difficult to match, colour match, because everybody's laptop or computer screens are different or device screens are different. So I'm matching it to what I see on mine, but if yours is completely different to my screen, you may be seeing it a little bit different too. So it varies. So you tend to use your oranges mixed with blues because they neutralize each other. Yeah, that's a really good option. I also really like the um, red and green neutralizing that's also really nice i use that quite a lot in 
of course all my botanical pieces if there's a dark green somewhere in the piece I'll just use some phthalo green and a bit of red to get that really dark green or I'll use um, perylene green that's a really a good dark green to have but now I love this transparent orange from Winter and Newton it's a really nice colour and if anybody really likes oranges I can definitely recommend getting this one for your collection. <laughs> it doesn't have a pigment number on the tube from Windsor & Newton, so be warned. When you get it from Windsor & Newton, there won't be a pigment info on the tube. Uh, the pigment info is PR107, I believe. It's DPP orange. It hasn't got a colour index number yet, I don't think, like a proper assigned one. I think this is what, it's, what it actually is. Yeah, the Paradine mix too, I think, is it Paradine Violet and Paradine Green? That's a really nice one to get a nice black. I could use that on this, but there's a shrink of paint I really want to use for, um, for my um, actual body of the butterfly. Uh, blue and orange can cool, control the warm and cool bees. Yeah, that's very true. Obviously, I tend to paint a lot of green things, so um, the green and red is um, a um, colour that makes I use quite a lot. I just put my finger in that paint. If I don't get it everywhere. I'm so clumsy. <laughs> How are we doing for time? Oh, not too bad. So you just gone free. I might do a slightly longer stream today because I want to get this finished if I can. I don't know if Cyan is streaming today or not. Is that my impact? Uh, the stream next week, depending on if Cyan is streaming, will be a lot later. Next weekend, I'm potentially going on an alpaca picnic. So, um, I'm not going to be around for the normal time. <laughs> so, I, I'm either going to cancel it or move the stream later next week, depending on if Cyan streaming. It's just so difficult to get. Sometimes this brush is really difficult to work with. It's so delicate that it's really hard to... It's nice when you want the sharp point and when you work it in the right direction, you get good control over that point. But sometimes when it's in tight spaces like this, it, um, you can't really um, get a very good, good control over the point because it's too tight of a space. green and gold is one of your onto sessions as in gold mixing as in gold mica mixed in with the green that could be quite interesting I really wish I could get the, the perylene green pigment somewhere but I've only ever seen it once and I think it was in quite a large quantity as in a quantity that you know it wasn't I am um, was not um, attainable as in it was in like so like 50 kilos of quantity, more than any paint maker will need. Yeah, I'm hoping so. We don't know if the paint is going ahead just yet though, because we don't know what the weather's going to be doing. If it rains, the people that, that organise it will cancel it in any way, because obviously they can't bring the alpacas outside in the rain. And obviously we don't want to sit around in a field when it's raining.
I've seen, um, is it Hermes that's done a gold? Does she call it Russian green? Is she or I can't remember what she's called it, but I've got one from her that has got green and gold mixed in. So she's got a green mica. She's got a green. She's got a green earth paint. I want to say it's Russian green, with natural pigment. And then she's mixed. She's mixed gold mica with it. I'll see if I can find it. Let's have a look. In my drawer of shame of all my um inks. This is her palette. That's not her palette. I got that completely wrong. It might be this one. Oh, she's got some very strange things happening there. But that green isn't in this paint palette, which is weird. Where have I put it then? Let's have a look. Uh, where did I put that paint palette? Oh, they're in here. It's not that one. It might be this one. No, it's not. Oh, wait a minute. It might be on my in my paint dryer. Hold on. Back in a second. It might be in my um de my dehumidifier. Dehumidifier. Is that what it's called? Dehumidifier. Dehydrator. That one. <laughs> Yes, it was in there. It was in my dehydrator. Because I found like a load of paints in a box somewhere. And they got all funny. They got all moist and strange. So I put them in there to try and help them out. We're playing with an odd dark PG7 you have. With shades got Oh, where'd you get the PG7 from? Is that the one from Cornelison? So let's have a look at what this looks like. I like the drawers a bit. And I need to find the black as well. Um, and there's the orange now drying a bit as well. You can see that it's still quite bright than orange. But it's muted a little bit. So let's just make sure there's no orange in left in my brush. I can't remember what she calls this paint. So I'm really sorry if you're looking at buying it. But it's a green earth mixed with golden mica, I think. There might be some green mica in here too, in here too but You won't be able to see the shimmer until it sort of dries because uh, the mica doesn't show itself until it's dry. Which way it might be really interesting to paint with mica. I'm trying to get some good bit of pigment there. But yeah, we just need to wait for that to dry and then um, I'll show you what it looks like. But yeah, that's the colour that she does. And it's got gold micro in it. Right, I think I now need to find my black paint. Um, is that in shot? Let's make sure that's all nice and in shot. And I need to find my black paint from Shrinker. Ooh.
Is it up there? Don't know if it is. Perhaps it's not. These live streams always end with me making a mess of my art studio. Uh, PG7 was one of the uh, colored earths uh, smoking on the mineral base. Ooh. I need to figure out how to use it up. It's not nearly as pretty as Peridine Green, but it's got its own charm, just so, so as a mix that so it shoots us and they shoot its to neutralize. Oh. It's really interesting though, like different pigments. So the black that I'm using from Schmincke is Schmincke's Payne's Grey. I love this colour. I'm running low on it. I don't use it very often, but when I do, I do find I use quite a lot of it. I tend to use it when painting anything black in any of my pieces. So like hair or clothes tend to be the normal one that I tend to use it for. Or sometimes it's shadowy bits in, um, in, or shadow bits in, like illustration. I can't get my words out then. <laughs> but I definitely need a new tube of it. It's running low. It's not often that I run out of a colour. Right. I think I'm gonna need a bigger size. Do I? I don't know. Let's try the size four. I have to be careful because I don't want to damage my brush because I have some masking fluid. this is a really good nice paint because it's not made what pigments are in it I know I remember I sort of know what they are but I don't it says PR 101 and PB 29 and PBK 7 so it's not a super strong black so it will mute down quite a lot when you paint it out so it's not going to overpower a piece or overpower a paint mix so you can use it without worrying that you're going to wreck your painting so for something like this I can use it and it would be work quite well like it looks quite dark, but it will fade quite a lot when it dries because of the PB29 and PR101. I did actually make a dupe of this colour way back in the day, but nobody ever bought it, so <laughs> I've not made it since. I think people can be put off when buying blacks in watercolour paint because they don't really know how to use them or they get the wrong black. But I can promise you that if you get the right black or you know how you want to use it or you know how to use them, it's a lot better than what you think. But this paint, I absolutely hated it when I first got it. I thought it was a really bad colour because I was looking for Payne's Grey. And I thought, oh, Schmincke's Grey, that would be a good one, like Payne's Grey. That's what it's called, it's called Schmincke's Payne's Grey. But it's nothing like Payne's Grey at all. And I really disliked it. But then there was an opportunity where I just kind of used this for something. I want to say it was my Professor Snape portrait that I did. I used this black for his hair and his clothes. And I really enjoyed how it, how it looked and how it turned out. I've done that quite a lot and quite a few times with colours, not just blacks, where I've used a colour for the first time. I just swatched it and thought, oh, I don't like that colour. I wouldn't ever have a use for it. And then I've gone on to actually really enjoy it. Another colour that I've had that kind of relationship with is Emma Green Earth. So I've only tried Green Earth at one point from brands, 
like a brandy greener from a paint company which I want to say it was Sennelier I tried greener from from a pan and I tried Winsor & Newton's one and I wasn't wowed by it so I hated the paint I then tried Amy's one and was blown away with it because it was so nice to use so moral of the story is always give your paints a second chance if you dislike a colour always give it a second chance use it in a painting and see how you feel afterwards if you still hate it then I think that's fine but you may be surprised that you might change your mind um, oh time to reveal the teapot I love good teapot Uh, you're confused with paints grey. A lot of people say they dislike black pigment, but love paints grey. So this one is a bit of a weird paints grey because it's quite a black one. Normally paints grey is very, is more blue leaning. A lot of reasons that people dislike black is because black is usually a very strong pigment. So if you use it in a mix, it will, it will usually overpower the watercolour mix. So like if you want to mix black with blue to make a darker blue, it will normally overpower the blue and you'll have a horrible mix and you'll waste loads of paint. If you use black straight away in a painting like this, if this is just a black pigment, it could completely overpower the painting. So that's why people don't like black. Whereas paint's grey, even though it might have black pigment in it, like this one does, it will have other pigments in there to um, mute it down so it's not so strong so that you can use it a bit easier. So where you want some shadows or some black in an actual painting, like let's say someone's black clothes, for example, or hair or shadows in an illustration, you can use paints great without worrying about it overpowering the painting and killing the entire vibe of the painting. Because of course, in reality, there's no such thing as black in real life. Like black, it doesn't exist in, like it's not a real color. Like if you look at something, nothing's truly black. Unless it's something really black, like um, like a black car or something, but generally nothing's black. Like if you're looking at a shadow in someone's face or in a landscape, it's not really black. It's kind of a dark colour or something. So what a lot of beginner artists will do is will just they will just reach for the black and paint whatever object is in that it is in black. Like if it's someone's face as a shadow, they'll paint it black. And then later they'll find that it's completely destroyed the painting because it's too dark and too strong. Which is why a lot of people like paints grey. It's easier to control and its shade is usually a lot more duller and more muted so you can use it easier. And it looks more natural than straight up black. I'm being so careful with this bit because this is like really, it's like a real thin line. It's why I like this version of paint grey. It's black but not too black. It's black enough if I want to use like a black paint. Like in this instance, like the, but the butterfly is quite black, the body, but if I use a straight up black pigment on this, it would be too strong and it would kill the painting. But because this is really muted, it's easy to get really good results and I can control how dark and how black I want to go. Indigo is nice, indigo is more blue though. It's very blue indigo. Especially synthetic indigo today, it's very blue. It's a bit more muted, natural indigo is a bit more muted, but most paint companies don't use natural indigo anymore because it's not very permanent, it will fade over time. I have some natural indigo and I have made natural indigo myself before. And it's a very, very pretty colour. It stinks though, it really smells when you make it. almost makes you high, it's that, um, it's that strong of a smell. It's not a smell that I can forget quickly. 
It's been a while since I made any actually. Perhaps I need to make more indigo. Natural indigo. I might have to open all windows when I do it this time around though because it really, really smells. I need to look at the chat, but I'm trying to concentrate at the same time because <laughs> I need to move quick because it's quite a pain. Uh, another issue I found some colours will not scan at all. What colours do I scan? Obviously, neon colours like Opera Rose won't scan very well. It's very hard to capture neon of Opera Rose, I think. Um, you tried Payne's Grey from Van Gogh and it seems kind of flat. Yeah, it, Payne's Grey can be a bit flat. That's why people like it, though. like if they want to use a black or a dark colour in their painting, it's where it comes in handy. Because you won't, like, kill the painting with it. You definitely know if your genes been dyed with natural or synthetic. I want some genes fade, do they? Let's try. I can put my hand down without worrying about getting paint everywhere. have the greatest scan but some reds and lime greens come out darker oh I'll have, to, I'll have to watch out for that one I've got a Canon light scanner I know that does a pretty good job Yeah, I think with indigo and paints grey, I think a lot of, particularly beginners, lean on those colours quite a lot. They think, oh my god, something's dark in a painting, I need to paint it black. They'll paint it black, realise that that's wrong, because it's too strong. They'll then switch to paints grey, and they'll still look at it and think, it still doesn't look right. It's something a lot of beginners do. It's really easy, easy to do. And it can be quite difficult to break the habit of just reaching for a dark black when you need to actually use a complementary colour and paint in a darker colour, the darker tone of the colour of the object. I know that's something that I used to do quite a lot when I first started painting. I would often reach for a black or a paint's grey. Because I thought that's what I needed. <laughs> uh, one of my characters I use um, cream magenta, cream purple for her hair and it scans black wow, that's really odd what printer are you using? what printer which, what scanner are you using? <laughs> is it something you can do like play around with with the scanner settings maybe that would help fix it? it's pretty bad if like it's not matching the colors that you need I 
I know I would really struggle if I had that issue and the scanner wouldn't pick up colours. Or can, is it something that you can fix in editing maybe? I'm going to have to paint the, the paint to do though to, to fix things in editing. Nervous now with these. <laughs> Need to get a nice clean edge, and it's not as clean as I want it. It's drawing a bit weird. This black, not quite as nicely as I wanted. It'll be better once I've done a couple of layers. I think. Because I'm work, trying to work quite quickly as well with it because I don't want to move too slowly and it dry on me in the middle of a wash because that just won't be very fun to do and have a harsh line. It's also why I recommend working in more watery washes because it's a bit more forgiving because it won't dry so quick. And as well if you've got to do more layers, you can then cover it up a bit easier. I really want to get this finished today because next week I want to do some paint making. One sec, I just made, went over the lines there a little bit on that one. Fine, I can fix it. <laughs> Go, just create a new edge. Um, yeah, so I think I've got the first layer done. When it tries, I can go with another layer. Oh wow. Um, oh, so you've got a Canon scanner too. Well, that's strange. I think I've got the light. I can't remember what light, light I've got. I'm trying to find out. Let's have a look. So, for my scanning, that's not scanning, but. Yeah, so I've got a Canon Lloyd Canon Scan 400. Um, uh, yeah, so you used to reach for great, um, paints great quite a lot too when you start. Yeah, it's really easy to do. Like you'll look at something and think, oh, that's black. No, it's not black, it's just like a really dark red or a dark blue or something. Or a dark green, and it's, yeah. I did my topic yesterday for my paints and managed to get the last paint pan with no mess. And then the last pan 
You squeeze the swinge too hard and float a little bit, drying around. Oh no, I hate doing that. I've done that quite a lot, where I've filled up, been filling up paints. I fill like 10 pans really nicely, really neatly. I'll then get to another pan and it'd be a real bad mess. Or I'll fill all the pans really nicely and then for the last pour, I will make a big mess. <laughs> it's really irritating. Oh, welcome back, Cyan. Are you streaming today, Cyan? And I've just seen what this butterfly looks like on the stream because I can't quite see it with it all zoomed in like this. Like I'm quite on top of it. So seeing it a bit further back on the stream, it looks quite nice. I'm quite liking it. All right, I'm going to leave the black to dry and I'm going to do some detailing on the orange petals, I think. So let's get some. I'm going to do some dry brushing because I'm insane. <laughs> and that's not wet enough. The mixture's too dry. Let's try that. More, more of a mix. Go. Um. Yeah. Um. Spend more time ungluing them from each other. Let's just go. Yeah. That's really. I, I hate doing that. I do it as well because I have, I do mine in a dehydrator and sometimes if I'm doing a pour on the dehydrator sometimes it will spill over. I've ruined a dark card before by doing that. <laughs> so you're doing a, you're sculpting a key cap terrarium. Oh, I'm going to try and watch that. Are you streaming next week, Cyan? Oh, thanks for stopping by, Danny. Enjoy the rest of your day. Definitely insane for trying dry brushing. <laughs> it was such a good idea, and now it's like requiring requiring a lot more work. Oh, that's a lot of water. Too much water. But I like to dry brush in a really weird way. I like my dry brush quite wet and I'll splay the brushes to get the nice splay on it. I find if it's too dry I can't get enough paint out. Instead of having nice fine lines it's just horrible. Uh, so streaming next week too. Uh, awesome. Explain very well at all. Uh, 
I just can't get this display. I think I've gone too wet. There we go. That's a bit nice display. This has to be wetter than on cold pressed paper because it's more bumps for it to go over. So yeah, dry brushing is definitely not a good idea. Um, you haven't cleaned your table yet. You must have everything on the other table. Yeah, I do that too much too. I'll sometimes just pile everything onto the floor <laughs> or, onto the win or on the windowsill in front of me. Sometimes I'll do that. I think the last thing that I painted orange was my lilies that I did. And I was so happy with those lilies. They were so good. I was really pleased and proud of how they turned out. <laughs> this is displaying. Oh, I hate when this happens. I've gone too wet. Too wet. Let's try that. Actually, the leaves that I did weren't even orange, they were red. I can also drape some fabric for the background. So I'll also stream in to Instagram at the same time. Obviously you do Instagram, you stream it on Instagram and then YouTube. If the camera can't see it, it doesn't exist. That's true. <laughs> I think we noticed that. I noticed that definitely on a couple of people's videos or streams camera can't see it, the mess that goes on behind the camera. Was it the Spin Doctor? The Spin Doctor art studio is really, really messy. I think the time that I saw it on camera, I want to say he was doing like a mixing video or something and then he like zooms out. And there's a lot of mess. Ev was quite bad too, I think, at one point on her desk. But I think she moved, didn't she, recently? Well, not re super recently, but in the last year she's moved. And her desk looks a bit tidier, I think. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with a messy desk. I'm not judging, but just saying. <laughs> I like to have a... I like clutter, but I don't like too much clutter. I think it's easy to have too much sometimes. Too much clutter I find unproductive. It's having like, like the right amount of clutter that I feel productive enough, but not over cluttered. I often think how things would work if I was still in my old place with the amount of art stuff I've got at the moment. I've got so much. <laughs> I just think it would not all fit. I'm not sure how it did fit. So I'm just watching my clean desk quite a cup of tea. Two palettes, my pens, two sketchbooks, and some swatches, my switch, and controller. <laughs> I think all artists are quite cluttered people, aren't we? We like our things around us. <laughs> I need to charge my switch, actually. My switch light. I've been playing quite a lot of Animal Crossing this Well, I was kind of playing a lot of Animal Crossing this week. I've been doing a lot of time traveling this week because I've been trying to kick out a villager and I was unsuccessful and ended up in the end buying just some amiibo cards or well, fake amiibo cards. 
so I can move this villager out because the villager I'm trying to kick out is the more, most recent villager and I think it doesn't work if it's the most recent villager like by a yoke they're not going to move up on their own they have to be kicked out by um, another villager and I'm moving in from the um, canvas site or from an amiibo card So my time traveling was unsuccessful. So I bought two amiibo cards um, just in case I want to kick anybody else out. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've also started the other week a, a Animal Crossing Instagram. Anybody wanted to follow me on it? <laughs> I'm trying not to follow our accounts on it, so... Unless anybody gives me a follow on it, I'm not going to follow anyone's Instagram account because uh, I want to kind of keep them separate. <laughs> Are these looking on stream looking all right this kind of reminds me of painting um astralicia or a bird of paradise flower like the orange on that that's what i painted using this color before I've not played Animal Crossing for ages. Uh, Ruka's hair in resin would be the civil authentic. <laughs> um, you could tell one of your favourite villages is my own. Because your attached controls has a drift. Oh no, that's horrible. Who was it? Can you, are they available on, on Amiibo card? You could always get them back. I find you could get like the just a code. It's a playing card with just a code in it. They're about four pounds, so not super expensive. I guess I get the excitement of island hopping to replace them. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I really wanted to do. I wanted to kick this with a drought naturally, but like, but and then island hop because I've never done an island hop before because. This is the village I've, as I've got on my island are all the ones I had the first time around. So I've not replaced any villagers and then I've moved out in the last year that I've had my switch. They're all OG. But this one village I want to get rid of. And I've wanted to for ages. I've been waiting naturally, just a natural amount of time to see if she will have the thought bubble above her head. But she hasn't done. And then after some googling I found out that you could do time travel to get them, so I could get rid of them and so forth. You know, I've not spoken to this character for three months. Let's try some time traveling, see if it helps. And then I googled some more, and then it turns out apparently your most recent villager you can kick, like, won't ever ask to leave. So unless you kick them out through campsite or an amiibo card, they'll never leave, like the most recent villager. So it's a bit pointless. I never find that I get any good villagers coming up on my campsite. They're all kind of just ones I don't want. So it's going to have to be an amiibo card to get rid of them. But I might do some island hopping. I might let some of my villagers move out now. Some of them I'm not too fussed on. And I think I could let them move out and find replacements for Uh, 
uh, you have four Insta accounts. It takes some thinking to keep them separate. Yeah, I think I've got, I've just got two. So I've got my art one, which I also use as kind of my personal one. I'll sometimes post personal stuff to it. And I've got my, obviously, um, Animal Crossing one now. Which is only going to be for Animal Crossing posts. So you won't see my face or anything on it. So a lot of these petals are so small I'm having to do a lot of these dry brushing individually, which is really time consuming. This is why I was mad to try dry brushing it. <laughs> um, so you can just find more pain more Are they really 35 to 45 pounds? Wow. That's expensive. I've got a switch light, so I don't have that. I would love to have a proper size switch, but I bought mine back when lockdown first started and Animal Crossing had already been released, so people were going mad for switches, and it became really difficult to get hold of a regular switch. They were going for crazy prices of like £400 for just like the basic. So I got the switch light because it was only £200. Yeah, all my villagers are there. I've never let anybody leave. My first villagers are there. I don't think I'd want to let my first villagers move out, even though I'm not a huge fan of them. One of So my first villagers when I first started off were Charlize and Boone. I'm not a huge fan of either of them, but I've grown to enjoy them over the last year, so I kind of like them now. But like, I wouldn't be super sad if they moved, but part of me wants to keep them because they're my first ever ones. And then I got Nan and Margie, who I got through Amiibo, because I really like them. And then I had Henry, which was my first one move in. I really hated Henry when he first moved in and didn't want him. But now he's actually one of my favourite. I think he's really cool. And then I had Callie. I think she was my first, one of my first villagers. Oh, no, she was my fourth one to move in, was Callie, the squirrel. I found her on a mystery island. So I got her. Back then, obviously, I didn't have a lot of Nook Miles because I was quite... Obviously, when you do, do your first island hops, you don't have a lot of Nook Miles because you're quite um, new. <laughs> so I just had Callie move in. And then I had Pat, Patty move in. She's all right. I've got her picture now, so I might ask her to... might let her move out. Because I've got her picture and she's... I don't mind her. She's nice enough, but I could move her out. And then I've also got Rex. He's okay as well. I don't mind him. I might let him move out once I've got his picture. And then I've got... Oh, I've got a deer. I keep forgetting what his name is. It's not Bam. It's another one. Oh, I need to look it up now. Animal Crossing. What's the stag called on Animal Crossing? Is it a deer? No, no, it might be a deer. It will come to me the second that I search for it and find his name. <laughs> deer Animal, what's his name? I like Bam, but I've not got Bam. But it's definitely a guy. Lopez, that's him. I've got Lopez. I quite like Lopez too. But the amiibo, well, I'm not going to. Uh, amiibos I just bought were for Marshall and for Stitches. But I'd also really like to have Raymond or Rosie or Poncho or Pudge as well. I really like those villagers. You have a free peasant.com as well. I keep meaning to look it up, but my first villager is. Oh, I just read that quite already. <laughs> you passionately hate all of your villagers. Oh no. Yeah, the villager I hate and that I'm kicking out is um, Tiffany, the rabbit. She doesn't really get on with any of my villagers or with me. And she's not um, giving me any good like DIYs or any good pieces or anything. It's just not any. It's just not worth having her around. So I'm going to get rid of her. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, I didn't answer your question. I'll 
tell you what, so it's Schmincker's Pain's great. Got the cheap here. So it's PBK, I did say what it was. PBK7, PR101, and PB29. So it's, it's more of a black, but yeah. I'm going to layer it so I get nice dark grey. Let's do the wings again to keep them separate from the body. I'll do a second layer of the grey. This should be a bit smoother now because I've already put one layer down. This paper is fairly hardly sized actually. I find the paints look a lot better after after one layer and a lot smoother. They look a little bit rough on the first layer I feel. Perhaps it's one of those papers that's better off painted on the back of the paper maybe. This is a block so I've not tried on the back of the paper. Perhaps I need to peel off a, block, a page experiment. But no, I like I like this um, Schmincker's Paints Grey. I used to really hate it when I first got it, but I've grown to love it. Kind of making a lot of um, I'm struggling to stay in the lines again <laughs> around this bit. Getting a lot out of the lines. You have to go with small blue, I think. Just tidy some of those up. I think I need to get a smaller paintbrush in there too. So I might actually do that. I'll get my smaller one to go around that shape. That way I'm not gonna mess it up so much. That's the plan in theory anyway. <laughs> Was the problem in painting around little bits like this, not messing up the detailing too much. I probably should have um, masked it off and done it separately, but oh well. What's done is done. And do this a little bit. I love this grey because it looks really dark when you first put it down but it fades quite a lot to a nice sort of black to a nice sort of dark grey say black nice dark grey so it allows you to build up lots of layers and get lots of different tones in there which is really nice if you're painting black things like hair or clothing or butterfly wings <laughs> Down a bit more, do the top bit up here. So yeah, if you want a nice black that's not going to kill your paintings and you're going to be able to use it quite easily, I recommend this one. I'm getting quite low on my tube and I think I'm going to be ordering another tube when I do a paint order next. 
which I'm trying to avoid because I don't have the money to do a big paint order. <laughs> Uh, I've been meaning to get that since the colour. I really miss your horror. No, is that? Um, so I'll read that again properly. I've been meaning. Someone says I've been meaning to get that colour. That one, I guess, in this colour, since it is a colour I really miss on my horror dome set. Yeah, no, I do quite like shrinker paints. I mean, there's nothing I can sort of gush over because they're nice paints. There's nothing super amazing about them. There's nothing like that I can like um, swoon over, but they're just nice paints. They're good all-round paints. There's nothing to say that's bad about them, but there's nothing that I can swoon over. <laughs> right, I need now to do some more of that. I need to fix that blue bit, and I think we're going to run out of time, which is something I didn't really want to do, but I guess sometimes it takes longer than what you think. Where is my paintbrush? There we go. Size two. Let's see if I can fix this blue paint. And this bit of a mistake that I made here. Basically, I did a wash, not thinking that this paint would lift, and it lifted. <laughs> so I made a big boo boo. Um, messed up. I might do some dry brushing on the leaves at some point. The leaves on the wings. <laughs> Just to, um, yeah, bring them back a little bit. So I think this black will start to overpower it a bit more. Especially as I get darker and darker. Let's see if I can do some orange on these leaves at the bottom. Just do a light wash just to darken some of it. No, I got some orange. It's all good. It's all gone. <laughs> so yeah, I can't wait for my amiibo cards to arrive. Talking about Animal Crossing again, can't wait to, for them to arrive, and I can kick out my villager that I don't like, <laughs> and kick out Tiffany, which will be amazing to do, and I can move in a villager that I'm kind of. Thinking of moving it instead. I've never had Marshall before on a previous game, but I've had Stitches before. I quite like Stitches, but I also really like the look of Marshall. He's supposed to be um, the, next, the next best thing to a Raymond, if you haven't got Raymond on the island. I mean, I was actually kind of hoping to get Raymond in an island hop, but um, yeah, obviously Tiffany won't move out on her own, so she has to be kicked out and forced out, <laughs> so I can't do an island hop. That as much as I would like Raymond, I think he's a little bit overloved. Everybody loves, everybody likes Raymond and wants Raymond, so. I don't want to be like everybody else. <laughs> so Marshall will do, I think. And then I might let Rex move out and replace him with Stitches because Rex is also a lazy villager. I don't want too many lazies on my island or too many sisterly ones, the ones that get up late because um, what I find at the moment with Charlize, Rex, and it would be Tiffany as well if I actually spoke to Tiffany. <laughs> Is they get up so late that when I play in the morning before work, they're not up yet. And I don't always play in the evening or afternoon. So sometimes I miss them when I'm playing. I don't see them. So they're proving difficult to get their photos. Because I don't have a chance to see them so much every day. Whereas some of the characters obviously they're up quite early. I see in the mornings before I go to work. Uh, 
let's try and do some orange on this one. Um, it's going to be difficult. So I try. Yeah, I could do the small black. So yeah, let's go back in with some black. I can do some black now on the other, the other wing. I can try and be a bit neater on the second layer. It was a very rough first layer, <laughs> but I didn't care so much about the first layer because I knew it was going to be quite rough anyway because it's the first layer and this paper kind of needs at least two to look really nice and smooth so I wasn't too worried about messing up the first layer or having a rough first layer because I knew that I was going to do more than one anyway so let's just grab a bit more black This is so delicate. <laughs> it says me that paints really detailed flowers. <laughs> I struggle with something like this. Fern, spread that. There we go. I'm trying to keep an eye on the time because I know that Cyan is streaming soon. And I want to have a little break before. And I don't think I'm going to get this done today. I'm not going to get this finished, I don't think. Which I kind of wanted to do because I want to do some paint making. I know I won't be doing any paint making next week. There won't be a stream next week. At least I don't think there's going to be a stream next week, depending on the weather, I guess. I might do a midweek stream at some point because I'm off on annual leave soon. So I might do a midweek stream at some point during that week. So the brush I'm using is a Raphael Sable brush. It's actually the Billy Shoal version. So it's got a very sharp point. Oh, nice for them. Um, <laughs> it's got it's a very sharp point, which I like, but it's very soft and delicate, which I don't like. Um, so when working in tight spaces, it's not so good because you you can damage the pairs really easily and the way it flicks in tight spaces is not so good 
but it has got a really sharp point in it on it. I tend to use this and rosemary brushes. I really like my rosemary and co sable brush. It's a really good brush. I love it. It's a lot better in tighter spaces than what this one is. But it doesn't quite have that really doesn't have that super sharp point. Like if I compare the points, I don't know if it comes across. This does have a good sharp point, but this one is like razor sharp. Like you could kill somebody with it. That kind of sharp. But I just sometimes I just feel this bit it doesn't do too good in some spaces and some areas so i try to not limit the how it when i use it but be more careful when using it right i might do some dry brushing on the blue leaves because i feel like they need some more depth and detail on them i keep saying leaves there and wings <laughs> they're not leaves they're wings so i might crack in some in damp and blue into this mix just to add something dark to it I might also put a bit of orange in this actually, just to really make it dark, or darker. No, that's not dark enough. Oh, is that going to be too much? That's far too much orange. Oh my god, it's like black. That's gone almost green. <laughs> Let's add some more blue to it. That's very blue. That's very green still. I don't know why it's making green. <laughs> oh, I suppose it's kind of yellow, isn't it? There we go. That's a nice bluey colour. Put some more in down for him. Make it nice blue. That's a very dark. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so you've got an animation one from Rose McClay. Yeah, because they do her brushes. They look really good. She does, She uses um, spotter brushes, doesn't she, in her work? So the short brushes. I don't have any spotter ones. I like the sable because you can get that splay on it that I use for dry brushing. But yeah, I might consider trying to get some spot ones. I do really enjoy my Rosemary & Co. Sable brushes, so these ones, they're really nice. They're very strong. Like I don't have any frayed hairs on them at all, and I've been using them for a year. Whereas there's a couple of frayed hairs on my Billy brushes. And I also have in my drawer, do I have some? Yeah. Spare Billy brushes because she has discontinued using sable brushes. So her range has been discontinued, which is a shame. You can still get them from Raphael though, like the standard Raphael brushes are black. Um, go away. Right, so yeah, do some dry brushing on the on these on these wings. Might I say it right? So yeah, perhaps I do need to get some some spot brushes not necessarily animation ones but spotter brushes so I'm just gonna do some dry brushing in the in the sort of direction of the wings Just some of the bits. To add a bit of texture. It's probably not showing up on my camera. Because dry brushing is very fine and at the moment it's obviously quite um pale. So it's not so strong. I mean look at the shape and the hold. Don't know if that showed the shape and the hold of this brush when I but so you get a nice hold on it, it's very strong. But at the same time, you can quite easily get it back to straight. That's not straight. Um, <laughs> you can roll it back to a straight point. It's still not straight. A straight point seems to be pretty brutal with it. They're pretty strong brushes. 
so I can, you know, sort of play it nicely and not worry about damaging the brush, which is really nice. Just what I want. It's actually making some nice dry brushing, actually. I forget how good these can dry brush. A bit of water I think I need. My dry brush is a bit too dry. Oh I love this brush. <laughs> this is a size two one that I'm using. I don't feel, I feel like I've got more control with this brush than I do the Billy brush because the Billy brush is so delicate, it kind of behaves in a weird way, particularly in tight spaces. But that point on is so good that I think I would miss it sometimes. That point. Well, that's not really a dry brush. <laughs> Too much paint. Never mind. It'll add to a nice effect, I guess. That's looking at making it look quite nice actually. Just try not to move my hand out the way on the stream. <laughs> Let's see if it'll work if I do some dry brushing with the orange. I might get some nice dry brush going on. So it will splay a little bit better. Yes, yeah, definitely a better splay on it. I don't have to worry about splaying it too much either because it will come back to that nice point because these are very strong brushes, which is just what I like. Oh, that's not splayed. <laughs> I'm just painting on colour there. <laughs> oh dear. That's the dangers of dry brushing. You can sometimes have the but the brush slick back together instead of getting the nice dry brush you want you just some um, spreading color everywhere which is not what you want might try do one more layer of that black on that top wing and then we're gonna have to call it a day because Cyan is streaming soon and I want a nice break and I think Cyan would probably want like a nice break to get ready for her stream so if I just quickly do this try and finish up by half four well, that's my time, so in 10 minutes. <laughs> say half past four. It might not be half past four where you guys live. <laughs> I 
I also feel with this brush I can do this, like colouring an area a lot better. If I can move my brush back and forth without worrying about it catching or splaying or doing weird things. If I tried to do that with the Billy brush, I'd either wreck it or it would do a weird thing and it would ruin the painting because it would move in a weird way. I like my Billy brush for some things, but for some things I don't. <laughs> Also, I think the Raphael brush is actually made with a lower grade of sable hair, well, weasel hair. I think they're made with a lower grade, so I don't think they're as high quality of hair as the Kalinsky sable. Kalinsky sable. I think they use red sable, red Kalinsky sable hair for all the rosemary brushes, so I don't think they're um, as strong, I don't think. I don't think, no, it's not quality, is it? It's strength, I don't think. Yeah. Which would make sense because they're a softer brush. Yeah, if anybody wants a good sable brush, I can definitely recommend the rosemary one. It's a lovely brush, it's really nice. And it's not too expensive either for sable brushes, I don't think. So it's quite affordable. It's definitely nowhere near as expensive as Winter and Newton or, or the Raphael or what other brands of brush are there. Da Vinci. They're cheaper than Da Vinci. And they're also cheaper than Isabay. And if you're in the UK, you also get cheaper shipping. <laughs> and you'd have to worry about paying customs tax. <laughs> That layer done. That one. Seven minutes to spare, look. <laughs> Are all my brushes clean? Can't remember if I've got any, if I've been using any what's in this. Well, that one's not clean. Let's clean you off. Right. So I'm going to call it a day. I think we've been at this for nearly two and a half hours. <laughs> oh, I'm going to quickly show you the um, green. So this is a green from Ame. Uh, I can't remember what she calls it, but it's like a green earth mixed with gold mica. And you can see that got green in it, that gold now in it. But yeah, we're going to call the stream um, done. <laughs> done for today. I won't be streaming next about, I don't think I'm going to be streaming next week because I'm going to be on an alpaca picnic. So I don't think I'm going to be at home in time to stream. Um, but I will post my next streaming dates over on my Instagram page and I'll of course post a event to the stream a couple of days, like before the stream, before the day of the stream. <laughs> Can't speak English. But yeah, um, thank you guys so much for watching and taking part. Um, I will see you in the next stream and good luck, Cyan, for your stream in half an hour. So bye everybody. I'll see you all next time. Bye.